Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. I just want to share something else that I guess we can say uh, documenting, preserving, and sharing our history. Um, the first thing I'm, you're going to hear is um, Imam W.D. Muhammad speaking in Harvey, Illinois on um, November 17th, 2000. Okay. Um, and this information very important for the community, especially for those who perhaps were not around, not aware of some of this information. And hopefully, like I said, it's always to be positive, but hopefully it shows some steps uh, in terms of why certain things was done a certain way. Alhamdulillah. Now, I played that a few times um, because um, I really want to emphasize what Imam said, I will not be coming to your masjids anymore. And that was um, November 17th, 2000. And so um, now we're going to share something with you. So now at, at that time, 2000, um, I was, um, along with others, put on what the Imam created, the... Um, um, the representative body, 2000, national representative body. So not only was I hearing these things, you know, what we just heard, but also witnessing uh, some of these things that the imam was referring to. It's one thing to hear, but also to witness it um, at, at the national level. So in witnessing that, that, um, that made me take certain steps myself. You know, you, you, this is November. So you'll see in 2001, I started calling for, which I've shown you in the last few, the need for new leadership. But it's because of these kinds of things here and an effort to try to help the imam and um, fight the forces that was against him. But I don't want to do a lot of talking. I just want to show you a couple of steps now, right? So I'm going to show you a letter that I sent to the imam um, um, in January 2001, and this is November, so a month later, and I don't want to necessarily say it was directly related to this. It, um, it was somewhat, but uh, I'll just say real quickly, Imam was in Newark, and he was speaking, and he said, I need you all to trust me no more, and um, uh, that touched me. I brought him in tears to my eyes to the point I said, wow, after all these years of his good character, leadership, et cetera, beautiful person, a leader did all the sacrifice that um, some people don't trust him. He needs to say something like that. So uh, I was moved to try to see what else I could do to help myself, 
to help him. Okay, um, so I'm going to show you a, a letter from me and then a letter from Imam Muhammad and just try to move this along real quickly. But I want you to take note what the Imam said there. I won't be going to their masters anymore. Okay. Um, um, if you want to get this tape, I had it. You can, you can go to New Africa Radio and you can look under... Um, Imam Muhammad's lectures, you can look on it. It was 2000, but on New Africa, they have it under, under 2001. But when you actually see um, the audio tape, it will say 11-17-2000. Um, okay, so here, you know, sometimes when you just, you know, most times when you're just doing the work, you may not see the connections because you're just in the work. Especially you look back 2000, 2001, and then later you may see the connections you know, once you settle down and whatever else, you know, I mean, time has gone by. So now with with what you saw here, heard the imam say, now I'm going to show you a letter that uh, two months from that that I wrote the imam. OK, first, we want to put the date because I, I signed it and, and put and put the date at the end. But you, you, you'll verify it once you see his letter. But here, um, letter that I sent to Imam Muhammad. So what we played was November, so you have December, and then now January, okay? You see, uh, with Allah's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer, assalamu alaikum, it's Imam Mustafa El Amin. Uh, and at that point, I'm not Imam. I think I, think I used that because the Imam had been referring to me as an Imam, but we're not over a masjid. And once the Imam referred to me that, I might have used it a few times. So you see this here, Newark. All right, uh, Imam W. D. Muhammad, 929 West 171st Street, Cal uh, Hazel Crest, Illinois. Dear Imam Muhammad, Dear Imam Muhammad, I pray that this, I pray that this brief letter will find you in the best of health and spirit. The purpose of this letter is to inform you that I am considering, considering establishing an Islamic center or masjid in the Newark area. Brother Imam, I love you. I love and respect you. I want to do all that I can to help you and your mission. I don't want to do anything to interfere with your plans or strategies for Newark. That is why I'm informing you of my thinking. At the, uh, Imam was saying he was he was uh, planning on thinking about moving to Newark. So, um, and like I say, what he had said just moved me to try to think of some way, some other way to help him. And then they say, I would love to have the opportunity to discuss this with you soon. May Allah bless you and your family. Mustafa El Amin. Now, here, I just was thinking about it. I didn't just go out and open a masjid. It wasn't really even something I wanted to do. But um, as I mentioned to you, he has said he wanted us to trust him more. And it touched me in a certain way. And I was like, I wonder what else I can do. And you see, I said Islamic Center or uh, a masjid in Newark. I said, um, but I want to emphasize, I don't want to do anything to interfere with your plans or strategies for Newark. He had plans for moving to Newark. That's what he was saying. And, and, and just all that he said about Newark. That is why I'm informing you of my thinking. OK, now. He responds, remember, this is January. Okay, this is January 2001. Now, uh, he responds quickly, okay, with Allah's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer, W.D. Muhammad, to Imam Mustafa El Amin, um, P.O. Box. Look at that, January 29th. I send mine out the 10th, okay, by the time he gets it, etc. Not long. Now look how he starts out his letter. Assalamu alaikum. Matters are judged by intentions. 
our prophet Muhammad, the messenger of Allah, the messenger of God. You see, that's the first thing he reminded me, okay, which I took and understand whether we meet or not. Understand if your intentions are good, then do whatever you have to do. Now, here are his words. Dear Brother Mustafa El Amin, okay, in my opinion, most big cities need five or more masjids. We are asking my daughter, appointment secretary Bakira, to contact you and arrange a time suitable for both of us to have the meeting you requested. Look at Imam Muhammad, your brother in the faith, W. Dean Muhammad. Now, it is important to know that that's on the backdrop of what Imam Muhammad, several things he had said with uh, some of the difficulties he was having with leadership, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and the things that I had uh, seen being at the national level myself, okay? And so please um, look at what I say, brother Imam, I love and respect you. I want to do all that I can to help you and your mission and don't want to get in the way, okay? Now, now I just could not be the type of person to hear these things and not try to do something, try to help, step forward in any way that I could. That's just the way I, I am and, and I know good believers are when you say you're with what is right and what is good and the good leader that we have in Imam Muhammad. And, in, and if you can help in any way, then, you know, we do that. And that's how I am. I wasn't one to just be a part of gossip and hear things without trying to step forward and, and do what I could. So when I, when I say that, I'm not just talking about me. I'm talking about any good believers. I, I just believe I was doing the same thing that any believer would do, law to the imam, if they was exposed to some of the things that I was exposed to, in addition to hearing what we, what we, what we heard. And I'm going to play it again. Now, as I've shown you, the imam, uh, my letter went to him in 2001, and his response uh, was 2001 as well, okay? Now, we call for what? Need for new leadership. When? Now, you see, by February, January and February, all right, the time has arrived, the need for new leadership. But this is coming about, brothers and sisters, as a result of what I just played to you that Imam said at, in Harvey and other things, but also things that I was seeing myself, right, in an effort to help. But also, we want, hopefully we can also see that when the Imam resigned in 2003, that wasn't just something haphazard. That wasn't just something that just popped up for him to do. You know, it, uh, um, he may have decided then, but you see the things that uh, there's, these things were going on while he was doing his great work. And, you know, he reached a point 
Uh, and, you know, and, and all that's associated with that, maybe later we can, you know, go into that again. Um, when he said, I'm, I'm resigning, but, and he, and he said the same reason based on what you can hear there. And they were, um, that had been going on for a while, but anyway, not to stay here, just showing you 2001, the spinoff of 2000 and I was on the national level, et cetera, et cetera, you know, and, and, um, and you heard what the Imam said. He wasn't going to the masters no more. They're not going to be with him. He's not going to be around them, et cetera, et cetera. So then I did uh, the need for new leadership, part one. Then we did part two, April 29th. And also the Imam and I, we 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 did meet me, him, and Imam Ali Muslim. Uh, uh, but but we, we met, but as you know, we didn't set up to 2003. So that wasn't something to rush into. And he said, take your time and you'll know, keep doing what you're doing the way you're doing it and you'll know. And that's when we set up when? In 2003, shortly before he, he resigned. And we wasn't included in that. I'm not coming to your master. Because not only did he come to master Ibrahim, which you're aware of, he came and also had me lead the Salat. Um, but I, I'm talking a little too ahead of myself. We're going to go finish these steps so we can shut down. Oh, that was from uh, um, Need for New Leadership, um, part one, February, this one here. And then as I've shown you, we did um, um, Need for New Le The Time Has Arrived, The Need for New Leadership, uh, part two. But real quickly, I'm just showing you the connection of what led to this. And we're just trying to get to um, uh, uh, where we want to get to Imam Muhammad visiting Masjid Ibrahim. So... Uh, uh, I'm automatically, by the grace of Allah and, and just doing the work sincerity, um, uh, um, excluded from, that's why it's, I'm looking back at it, how significant it is. The imams say, I'm not coming to their masjids, this, that, and the other. But then once we established Master Ibrahim in 2003, uh, uh, in three months he was there, and as you know, not only did he Come to Master Ibrahim, and we'll show you a clip. He had me to lead him in 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 Salat. Uh, so you know, like I say, we were just doing these things, but now to look at it, you know, you 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 see how significant 
how significant it is anyway, but now in light of some of the other things and, and that in particular, what I uh, um, shared with you, um, I think it, it highlights uh, the significance in the relationship even, even more. But uh, again, even though it's me, I'm really just trying to emphasize again, the relationship that the imam had, had, had in his heart with uh, good, sincere people. And even in his struggles where his heart and, and, his, and, 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 and his spirit was always with all of the everyday good, common people, okay? And again, only by the will of Allah. You know, Allah is always in charge of all matters. Now, two years later, now things continue to happen and, and you know, and, and, and we could pull up things where the imam uh, kept addressing the issues that he was having with a um, certain group of leadership working against him, etc. Okay, even from one on. But two years later, what do you see here? This is Imam uh, uh, greeting the masjid. Uh, Imam W.D. Muhammad visits Masjid Ibrahim in Newark, right? And that's May 29th, 2003. So it adds a, a greater significance in my heart and my mind, and I'm sure others would see that too. Um, So alhamdulillah, he came to Master Ibrahim, um, um, alhamdulillah, and, and let me just um, share some other information and we, and we wrap this up. Because um, even when he resigned, and he was asked a certain question, so to let you know that was still in place. Uh, we're going to show that where, he, where that was still in place. He wasn't going to go to um, these masjids or be around these people that wasn't... Um, uh, you know, that was just phony. And we know that. That's when he resigned anyway, and he, he said the reason why, you know. As you go know, uh, shortly after he left Master Ibrahim, three months later, he um, resigned, and we met, and we stepped forward, as, as you know. Um, to help and help him in, in the work and to reorganize the ASM. Uh, let me share something before we uh, jump, stay here to, with Master Ibrahim. Because I tell you to continue, let me just play a little clip from uh, uh, um, 2002 at the convention on August uh, 31st, 2002, uh, that the Imam uh, made reference to. Okay, just going to play a brief clip and then come right back to this to show that, you know, from 2001, <laughs> 2002, and then 2003. I said several times, speaking, that I got people I know that are working to undermine me. They're right around me. They're working to discredit me. They're working to discredit me. They're not working to destroy me because they know my staying around is their existence right now. Without me, they wouldn't be around either. So it was really nonstop. So it was really added to the significance of Imam Muhammad uh, um, in 2003 coming to Masjid Ibrahim and then not only coming there and then asking me to... Um, to lead the Salat. So, um, you know, I, I was always honored and try to be sincere and, and, and not in that club of people uh, with selfish motives, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I'm seeing these connections now, you know, you're just doing the work.
So here, as you can see, we're lining up uh, for prayer. And I'm going to play a clip from, from him coming there, but I want to show something else where the imam let you know he was still on that, that, that note um, uh, at, even after he re, uh, resigned from the um, ASM. Master Ibrahim, May 29th, Now, um, real quick, as I showed you before, um, September 28, 2003, an exclusive interview with Imam W.D. Muhammad, and it was done September 10th, 2003. Um, just want to um, point out something that he said there as well in 2003, uh, attending uh, certain masjids. So in the interview, the brother asked him, um, uh, about Imam Earl Abdul Malik, his uh, representative at that time, national representative, and he say, uh, who speaks on your behalf at various locations in the United States. Now, you can find this Muslim Journal issue if you have it. Okay, and Imam, uh, uh, how does your resignation as a leader of the ASM affect his role? Imam Muhammad said, well, not at all, although... Uh, e. Abdul Malik was a member of the ASM as I was and also an imam involved at one time in the Baltimore and Washington area since he has been with me most of his work has been in support of my leadership and in support of the agenda that we have for the WDM ministry, the mosque cares. Now he say, so his role won't change. That is still his role. His role will be affected, though, because now, as he represents me, he can't answer masjid invitations to come and lead Juma, etc. It is not because that would be harmful, for they can invite any imam they want from Egypt or Pakistan or anywhere or from any race or group they want. The ASM imams can invite anybody they want to come and lead Juma, but it is important that I keep separate right now. I keep separate right now. People in the public and others will be confused if I come and lead Juma for them. It is not that I don't have the spirit to lead Juma for them. I do have the spirit to lead Juma for them, but I'm sure those who don't like to mention in their kutbah when they are speaking to their followers that Islam is freedom, justice, and equality, those who don't care to promote the sales of Muslim journal in their area, who don't like to talk about embracing your Christian neighbors next door to you, uh, they wouldn't want me coming to their, coming there and doing a kutbah and making a public address. Okay. Uh, he say, I know that on this note, Muhammad, the prophet, may the prayers and peace be upon him. But here, I'm just showing this here as the imam put it in this way, uh, which, which we know is a carryover uh, from before, where he say, now he's given another reason or, or an additional reason why 
uh, uh, he wouldn't be attending uh, uh, the masjids. Now, in saying that, I'm really just emphasizing my main point is that even in the cloud that uh, uh, he came to Master at Ibrahim and um, uh, he spent quite a bit of time there, very comfortable, and uh, he asked me to lead the Salat. So, I mean, that's my main, that, was, that was my main point in um, just showing you, you know, how we, we're grateful and emphasizing we, that we wasn't a part of that uh, uh, that crowd or whatever they whatever they were, whoever they thought they were, that we were definitely a part of supporting the imam and stand firm and solid with him on behalf of our community. And like I say, you you know you kind of see these connections now. And not only are you even more honored, but you also see a greater significance um, of of him coming to Masjid Ibrahim in light of everything that was going on. And then, you know, as you know, uh, um, you know, he came back into the area after he resigned and we sat down and we stepped forward um, uh, as he as 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 he wanted me to do. Um, or, or wanted to see happen with the uh, ASM. We're not going to spend a lot of time there, but um, but alhamdulillah, I mean. And it wasn't easy. The imam had a tough job from beginning to end, and I'm glad, uh, thank Allah, that I was there as well as others to support him and help him in the best way that, that, that we could. And uh, and let's, let's you know we stay positive. He's not here, but we keep doing what we have to do. And um, this 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 is true. If we just keep him in a human form, he had his up days, his down days, happy days, and sad days. You know, and at Bashirun Mithlakun, that's what Muhammad the Prophet was told to tell us. You know, W. D. Muhammad stepped down in August, frustrated that most imams refused to adopt more mainstream Islam. And Imam Muhammad always felt uh, um, good, comfortable, secure, etc. When he came to Newark, so um, you know it's, it's it's no surprise. It shouldn't be no surprise that even after he resigned, that um, first place he came uh, was to Newark. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin.
Uh, I just want to take a quick moment here also um, with 2003 when the imam came to the masjid and when uh, uh, he resigned in 2003 and and uh, and, I, and I stepped forward, etc. Um, um, that now as 2003 is come, uh, 2023 is coming to an end and uh, we're putting these things out mark, marking the 20 years of Masjid Ibrahim, 20 years um, when the imam resigned and we stepped forward and, you know, a lot of other things. But what I want to take a moment to, to let you know, too, that um, if you wanted to know the history of our community, and you may have gotten this book here, um, this book here is the most accurate a book on our history of El Islam in America, et cetera, et cetera. And this book here was published by uh, WD Publication. And in 1999, and, and I was there too, Imam Muhammad called together uh, writers. It was uh, July 4th uh, weekend. And he assembled a team to, um, to write our history and um, this book here, I think WD Publications still still have it here. Well, in this book here, let me just show you something here. Okay, uh, first of all, you can see the the, um, the history of Muslim uh, African Americans, uh, the Islamic History Project uh, uh, work group, and these are the individuals, um, Marvis A. Aleem, etc. Um, who made up the group, although they was input by others. And you can see this was 2006, uh, copyright, the second printing, 2007. But what I want you to see here is published by WD Publications, okay? Published, encouraged, and approved by uh, Imam W.D. Muhammad. Now, what? why am I showing this to you here? I want, I'm going to show you something here. Um, that's a part of our history, all of this. If you can get this book, if you don't have it, you, you, you know, you, you, you want to have this book, okay? Now, now here also at the end of the book, you see the participants, right? Islamic History Project group participants, those who had uh, some kind of input into uh, putting this book here together, okay? Aisha from the Muslim Journal, etc. okay? Now, here you have a statement from Imam Muhammad uh, uh, to Marvis Aleem, who, who kind of spearheaded, Dear Marvis, with pleasure and congratulations, I endorse uh, your book draft, History of African American Muslims, Imam W.D. Muhammad. Okay, he endorsed it November 18, 2004, and then it was published in 2006. Now, this is our history. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm heading somewhere here, okay? We're going to get right there, okay? And I'm showing you this. Published by WD Publication, Imam assembled this team. What do you see here? Rebuilding the American Society of Muslims, right? Look what this says here, right? If there was a problem, right? This is part of the history now. At an address in Newark, New Jersey on December 21st, 2003, Imam Mustafa El Amin proposed the continuation of the American Society of Muslims. He presented a 10 point plan that included greater support of the Mosque Cares and Imam W.D. Muhammad's initiatives, as well as identifying. ASM imams and other leaders who support reestablishing a national ASM leadership body. Okay, so this is in this accurate history book of our community. All right, um, what we did, and I thank a lot that we're part of that history. And and I'm I'm holding this here, but you know it also refers to that interview that I just read from the Muslim Journal on September 10th, 2003, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But 
um, I wanted to show this here and, and really tying it into 2003 and 2023, kind of closing out the year. So it's 20 years, 20 years of good hard work. But um, just wanted to inform you also of that. And, 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 and the book is just just rich with knowledge and, and good history of our community. And, and, it's, and, it, and, it, and it's more accurate. It's, it's published, written by our people from our community. Alhamdulillah, Rebbe Alameen. But, and I'm honored again uh, to be a part of that history, to let you know when we talk about reestablishing the ASM and all of that, even if you say that's what, well, know that that was a major part of our community history a major part of that. And I'm honored to have stepped forward. And, you know, we went through some changes and, you know, you, you learn people and you and whatnot, you know. So I just wanted to, and later on, I'll share this again and then share with you the 10-point uh, presentation that uh, 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 I, I thought would have been a good idea for, uh, for, for our community, okay? And make no mistake, everything I try to put out is it has a positive, the motive is positive, the intent is positive, and really to share, uh, share history. So uh, even here, we share some things the Imam said um, um, uh, about uh, the situation, et cetera. Um, that's for us to be informed and to be, in, uh, to be aware. But, but the overall message is to be positive and, as I say, documenting, preserving, and sharing uh, our history for now and for the future, for future generations. So the reality also is that Imam Muhammad uh, attending Master Ibrahim and didn't even ask me to lead the, the Salat uh, is much, much, much more significant than maybe it might have appeared uh, initially. So looking at it in light of what was going on and and then him resigning, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, is a very significant part of our history. You know, I'm not looking for any points myself. I'm, I'm honored and hope to keep doing what I can on behalf of our community. And we keep Imam Muhammad in our prayers and all good people that are trying to help humanity.
Alhamdulillah, Imam Muhammad came to Master Ibrahim May the 29th, 2003. No. Imam Muhammad attended Master Ibrahim. No, Muhammad says, I see you got the camera ready. Let's take the picture. One step, a lot take two steps towards me. Muhammad is greeting the masjid.
after he finished praying, greeting the master, then he instructed me to meet the Salat. See you soon to do Juma for you one day. He passed before that could happen, and I had cancer before that could happen. A serious sinus cancer, and he passed in 2008. And I had the cancer in 2008. 
Yeah. Well, point is, you can see how comfortable the Imam is here. Chancellor Avenue. And actually, some years later, we move right across the street where you see that red looking building.
Chancellor Avenue. Avenue. Historic Chancellor Avenue. 2003. No, go right here. Yeah, I know Mustafa el -Amin and I'm very impressed with him and his sincerity, Imam W.D. Muhammad. Not to any person. Our loyalty is not to any person before it is to God. Our loyalty is to God. Believers worship God, not individuals. Real believers worship God, not individuals. A lot of people by habit, they worship individuals. They worship the more popular person in the leadership. If that's me, they worship me. If that's uh, somebody else, some other leader among us, they worship him. Or her, because we have leaders, females and males. This is not for a believer. A believer is never to worship a person. A believer is always to worship only God. We are only God's worshipers. And worshiper is a hop. Literally, the word meant a slave in the time before Muhammad the prophet. When he was given revelation from God, the word slave came in revelation, and it gave a new meaning to slave. It means worshiper. It means servant of God. It means worshiper. Up. The plural of free will. God gave us our own mind to think for ourselves and make free choices, to make our own choices. God does not impose himself upon us, and God does not dominate us. God is not one that dominates. And he can do it. He has power over all things. He could have done that. He could have made us like trees. Do not ever grow in one place and stay there. But he made us human beings with free minds and free spirit and a brain to think for ourselves and make decisions on our own. He made us even to question him if we want and to reject him if we want. And he says in our holy book, this religion is, is for you. Let him who wants it take it. Let him does, who does not want it, reject it. And he says in our holy book, this religion is, is for you. Let him who wants it, take it. Let him does, who does not want it, reject it. So the religion is not to be forced on anybody. Dawah, or preaching in Islam, to introduce Islam to others, is invitation. Invitation. It is not forcing the religion on somebody or ordering them to be Muslim, or threatening them, say, if you don't believe in this, you're going to hell. This is not Islam. This is it's invitation. Invitation. It is not forcing the religion on somebody, or ordering them to be Muslim, or threatening them, say, if you don't believe in this, you're going to hell. This is not Islam. This is not the way of Islam. Islam is invitation. And God says, Jadilhum billeti hiya ahsan and discuss with them or debate with them in, the, in a way that is beautiful and intelligent. The first point here is that our loyalty is to God. And we are only servants or worshipers of God. We know we serve society. We serve our mamas and daddies. <laughs> and we serve our family, we serve society. But when it comes to who has authority over our service, it is not mama, it's not daddy, it's not
not the president of the United States, it's God Almighty, if we really understand our religion. If we really understand our religion, the one who has authority in your life, and the one who demands your service, who has the right to demand your service over all others, take it from mama, take it from daddy, take it from family, take it from nation, take it from your group, your political group, whatever. The one that has that right is only God, only God. Our allegiance is firstly to God, not to the United States of America. Our allegiance is firstly to God. But thank God. Alhamdulillah, pray that what we're sharing is some benefit and we wanted to close with those words with the Imam just reminding us that in all of our work and all of our love and respect for each other and leadership, that Allah is always in charge. And that's who we're to uh, worship and ask for guidance and protection and leadership and be grateful to Allah. He's always in charge. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Again, brothers and sisters, we pray that what we're giving is um, documenting, preserving, and sharing our history. Greet you, assalamu alaikum.